Well, with the U.S. on the brink of war in both Korea and Syria, it's worth asking what would happen if that actually happened, if war broke out. George Liebman is a Baltimore lawyer and a visiting scholar at Wolfson College, Cambridge. He just wrote a piece to the American conservative called 17 Rules for Foreign Interventions. He actually lists more than 17 rules, but they're all smart. George Liebman joins us tonight. George, thanks for coming on. Thank you. Um, so I, I just want to go through a couple of these cause, and, and have you um, elucidate uh, these a bit. Uh, here's one. Never propagate civil wars. The revenge killings last for 100 years. Is that always true? Well, I think it's nearly always true. I think we've seen that in Iraq. We're seeing it in Syria. We should know something about this from the history of our own country when one recalls what went on during Reconstruction and afterwards. Yes. We are still paying the price for the Civil War. So th through this piece, which I, is on our Facebook, and I would recommend uh, our viewers to read it, runs this thread basically warning against hubris. And you're making the point that there's only so much we can know about another country. And you, you quote George Kennan, who said, the worst of rulers knows things about his country that foreigners do not. Do you think we keep that in mind enough? No, I think we obviously don't. I mean, Saddam Hussein was well aware that he had the confidence of the Sunni population. Uh, Assad had the confidence of the religious minorities in, our, in his country, which have sustained him in power. Uh, Gaddafi in Libya uh, knew that uh, his was a country that really had no government, that it was uh, the basis of government was totally tribal. And we went into all three countries as though we were doing battle with a unitary state, which we obviously were not. Right. And one, one feature of these totalitarian regimes that people tend to lose sight of is how brittle they are. And that's probably even true of the North Korean regime. When these regimes collapse, as we saw in Eastern Europe, yes. they go down with a big bang and there's nothing left. And right. there are dangers in that also. That's right. They just haul the Ceausescus out behind the court and execute them and then it's just poof, it's over. You have a line in here, wars cannot be won on the cheap without infantry. That was a really distressing thing to read. I hope it's not true, but you think it is. I think it is. Uh, I think uh, uh, you can't, uh, uh, I mean, the, the, the history, in the, even in the Second World War, was that you had enormous destruction from strategic bombing in Germany and Japan. You had in Korea, enormous destruction from bombing. You had in Vietnam enormous destruction from bombing and it, it didn't make a whole lot of difference. It made some difference. Right. But uh, in terms of ending the war, it didn't. No, it certainly uh, didn't. It took, a lot, it took a lot more. And, fi and finally, the result of all those conflicts you mentioned were massive waves of refugees moving, in a lot of cases, to the West. Is that always a feature of war, refugees? I think, it, I think that's probably a generalization that uh, is true. The Korean War, we have millions of Koreans in the United States who came here as a result of the dislocations of the war. The same is true of Vietnam. The results of our interventions in Libya, in Syria, and in Iraq have been refugee flows which have destabilized Europe. And the results of our adventures in Central America have been refugee flows that uh, have had a rather bad effect on the Southwest and on many American cities and that uh, have really given rise more than anything else to the concern uh, about immigration when you have these uh, drug gangs uh, yeah. and the like in large cities. As so happens, I, I don't think that... No, you're right. We're doing a segment on that coming up, in fact. It's nice to talk to someone who reads history once in a while. There aren't many here in Washington. George, thank you for joining us tonight and for that. I appreciate it. Thank you.